It's not just radio, it's Rockland World Radio. RocklandWorldRadio.com Welcome to Sober University, your next step to successful recovery. With Cheryl Adler, who says, if you are going to crave anything, crave living life to the fullest. Maximize all you have and squander nothing. This program provides information to help you get your physical, mental, and spiritual house in order. And now, the host of Sober University, Cheryl Adler. Welcome, my Rockland World Radio listeners. Thank you so much for being here with me right now on this beautiful, sunny Monday. Um, I want to thank you for joining us and to keep in mind this is my home away from home where we have fantastic programming here. So please, after you check out my show, take a look at all the other wonderful shows as well. Um, I have a special return encore guest today who is calling in from Guernsey, a magnificent island in the English Channel off of the coast of France. And I wa want to welcome Neil Dickens back to actually turn the tables and interview me for a change. So I'm really white knuckling it today. Uh, before we begin, I just want to encourage our listeners to go into the chat room with questions and comments at rocklandworldradio.com or call at 845-353-2910 and know that this show is sponsored by myself and my book, Sober University, Your Next Step to Successful Recovery. You can visit me on my website, soberuniversity.com or call me at 845-358-4652. Welcome back, Neil. Hey, Cheryl. Hey, That's you. Fine. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I have to say, just to acknowledge it, you did a wonderful introduction there. Uh, you, you, you make the island of Guernsey sound very exotic indeed. We had 78-mile-an-hour uh, winds last night. so. Uh, <laughs> and I'm glad you haven't been blown off yeah. the, the <laughs> island. Is your hair intact? <laughs> everything, everything else is intact. Oh, that's, that's very nice. important. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, Neil, so, share with, with my audience, who is now our audience, some information about you and yeah. how wonderful it is to have you back as an encore guest because we had such a fascinating show on love and sex addiction. We did indeed. We did indeed. And I honestly thought that uh, as wonderful as that uh, segment, half-hour segment was, I don't think it did you enough justice when it came to acknowledging this incredible book that you've put together which, uh, you know, is really the, if, you know, to put our cards on the table, it's really the reason why we've become so sort of, um, you know, sort of impassioned about our respective fields and, and working closely together. Yes, thank because, you. Uh, you know, as, as you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working actively with, uh, with patients in addiction and yes. um, spent a lot of time studying addiction as well. It's, it's an area that uh, fascinates me, um, and I think that fascination is something that's also shared by people who are suffering from addiction. Because, quite so, um, quite yeah, so. Yeah, we're, we're always sort of looking, aren't we, to sort of try and understand, you know, w what is it? As we know it's a multidimensional or multifaceted uh, phenomenon. Absolutely. But, um, you know, reading through this book, I was, I was keen to sort of, um, A, give you some credit where it's due to make this <laughs> show you. about your book. But also to see if we could try and weed out what we sort of, you know, what you thought were some of the key, the key things that, you know, really did uh, matter when it came to, to people that are really trying to, to break some very debilitating patterns. Absolutely. Well, the most important element of the book is the humanity that I, I hoped to convey in it, that there is no judgment or criticism. It's, it's really a book that says, please pick me up and find any or all the parts that speak to you at any given time and you don't have to read the book from cover to cover you can really browse through the table of contents which is is quite uh, complete hopefully comprehensive mm -hmm. and um, you know we have everything from real life stories that are fictionalized in, in terms of protecting confidence mm -hmm. to actual healthful recipes 
and uh, all things in between. So it, it will hopefully be a dynamic read and a very useful resource and a tool yeah. to help people at any stage of their recovery. And also, yeah. it, it's a, a book that one can gift to somebody in their life, even if they themselves are not addicted. They, I'm sure, know people in their life who are. Mm, mm. I, I absolutely endorse what you're saying about the, 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 the humanity aspect of it. I know from people that um, I've passed this book on to and I've referenced different chapters or uh, that, you know, they've, they've borrowed the copy that, uh, that I have. I know that they feel held by this book and I think that's the real remarkable thing about it. Uh, it, it is something that, um, you know, one doesn't have to actually wade through it page by page. And yeah. I say wade, meaning if that's something that somebody would find difficult to do. Yes. Um, you can dip in and out to different chapters, but all the time you feel like you're getting the sense of being held. And I yes. know on a, on a, from an academic perspective, you know, how important that is when it comes to an individual who is switching their dependency from their drug of choice. It's so important for them to feel that they've got somewhere to go to. Yes. And this book, to me, is, is what's so fantastic, and that's what, how it does such a great job. So, Thank you so much for your well, endorsement. You, that's beautiful. You, you know how passionate I am about it, Cheryl, and I have yes. been for some time. I know that there are countless books that, that are out there, and all of them do a great job, but there's something phenomenal, and more people need to know about this book because I really do think that... In, in, in essence, an individual who reads it feels like on some level that they're being held, that they've got something that's a go-to for them to go to that they can dip into and they can start to adjust their pattern, the debilitating pattern, away from the drug of choice and keep booking, picking up this book instead. That, that's right. The, the book is intended to be a friend and a tool and um, something of comfort and hope. Uh, that, that you know that there are other options. And mm. I think that when you're so mired in your addiction, it's not necessarily so easy to be able to do that. But yeah, yeah, th this yeah. book, um, I'm, I'm happy to say, is selling, and I get wonderful compliments on it. I, I hope that doesn't sound too boastful. I say that with humility and gratitude that I was mm. able to write the book. It was a, a very deep labor of love. Mm, mm. I, the, 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 what I suggested, uh, I think, when we were talking about, um, you know, doing this segment was uh -huh. I think I, I relayed to you that there was one, one chapter in particular that really sort of has stuck out for me. Sure. Uh, because I know that working with patients who are struggling with addiction um, at uh, uh, Chelsea and Westminster Hospital in London as an accredited psychologist, I know that so many people understand uh, what a trigger is, and also understand how dangerous it can be. I would love to tap into your wisdom right now sure. and for you to talk to us about triggers. A absolutely. Did you want to ask a specific question or just hear my viewpoint on triggers? Well, I mean, the, the, the chapter starts talking about um, what a trigger is. So maybe we'll start by asking what a trigger is. Sure. Well, a, a trigger is really the switch that gets turned on, whether it's a person, a place, or a thing, uh, for an addict. And so you would have to really fill in the blank. So if, if you're a spending addict, for example, and you've got lots of money in your pocket because it's payday, your trigger might be that the money's in your pocket and you feel like going shopping or you feel like gambling rather than stop and say, wait, oh. I've got to pay my bills. I've got to fuel up my car. Um, I've got to feed my children. Um, it, it, it sort of is a thing that overtakes you because there's a, a very seductive quality to a trigger. And a, a trigger can be sneaky. It, it's not necessarily so overt as what I just described to you. A trigger can also be a very unconscious motivator where I have seen many of my clients who seem to be going along very nicely and they have an Achilles heel. And that, that Achilles heel is somehow tapped and then they're off and running. 
right. and, and a, a relapse occurs. So I, I would say that people who are seeking to really buoy and fortify their recovery in a very, very positive way need to spend a lot of time getting to know thoroughly their triggers and their decision chains which uh -huh. are the thoughts that connect one to the other that say you know I, I just have to use uh, it doesn't matter this is what I need right now there's such an urgency uh -huh. and that rather than do that we hope that the reactive brain learns some very important tools in regard to thinking and mitigating those original urgent feelings that mm -hmm. um, I, I think there's a part in my book called um, something about emotions and feelings and mm -hmm. that, that the behaviors last that the feelings pass but the behaviors last right, right so right. what happens in many cases is an addict will latch on to the feeling more than the behavior in order to relieve the anxiety, the depression, or to seek a big adrenaline rush. They want so much to be in that high mm -hmm. that the, the behavior is overlooked, the, the consequence is overlooked, mm -hmm. or the positive behavior has not yet developed enough or at all to become something much more real and substantial for them. Right. Just to go back to what you said, all of this makes perfect sense. Um, okay. In what, what you're saying, sure. But just to go back to what your point you made earlier, are you saying that it's in, it's in the interest of the individual who is working very, very hard, whether they be working with somebody like yourself uh, as, as a psychotherapist or with myself as, a, as, as an accredited psychologist, is it fundamentally important, and I think you said this, but I just want some clarity on it. Sure. Did you say that there are several thought processes that go to make up the overall thought process, and it's important to break those down? Absolutely. It okay. could not okay. possibly be just one synapse meeting another. <laughs> I, sure, I, sure. I think there are so many triggers that, that can be happening and very unconsciously for many addicts mm. that I, I think what we want to do is, is really help an individual talk as much as possible about their life and their mm -hmm. circumstances, mm -hmm. their environment, mm -hmm. um, get a history, uh, things in their past that they may be repeating again quite unconsciously. Right, right. And uh, we, we cannot ignore the past. You know, mm -hmm. pe people want to separate the past from the present, but yeah. we need to learn from our history so we don't necessarily repeat the bad stuff. Yes, because the past has often been the very uh, basis upon which the pattern is formulated in the first place, correct? Yes, the, pa the yes. pattern and the imprint are, are mm -hmm. very much embedded. Um, based on the past, and especially very deep-seated traumas, um, mm -hmm. difficult memories, experiences that happened when you're very young and very impressionable and vulnerable, certainly mm -hmm. can become part of the tapestry of your imprint. And, mm -hmm. and so, you know, when I use the word tapestry, I de very deliberately use that word because it's not necessarily so easy to pull out a single factor and say, aha, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. what's causing this. Mm -hmm. So there's some legitimacy to the behavior because it's ultimately um, a, a coping mechanism. Yes, I which, think that the, the I'm yeah. sorry, I'm sorry. The, yeah, the, the behavior, I think, on the face of it, w could be judged as very maladaptive to those mm -hmm. of us who mm -hmm. say, no, 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 there's better ways. Mm -hmm. But but people are resorting to these coping mechanisms because it's what they know. It's what has given them comfort. If if you're a food addict and you want to stuff yourself on pizza and pasta because those carbohydrates are going to sedate you, that's what you're going to do. That's mm -hmm. that's the mm -hmm. thing that's going to help you get through the next moment. Mm -hmm. And and you may say, but that's 
contraindicated for my weight loss program. But you know what? I'm just so stressed I have to do it anyway. Yes, yes. There's a wonderful quote in the book where you say, watch yourself and Uh freeze each frame in your personal movie so that you can identify the definitive moment when you choose to get high. I think that's brilliant. Oh, thank you. Yes, that's right. If, If you could step back and watch that movie and watch yourself frame by frame so that you're really doing a slow motion watching yourself each frame Mm. you might be able to say ah wait a minute i see where this is going Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i mean so so many people are obviously aware of um of of, 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 you know the biochemistry side of of, of addiction they talk about you know sort of inheriting it from from, you know, sort of previous generations, you know, there are so many means by which an individual could potentially get bogged down and defeatist. Is it wrong for me to throw or shine too much light on this particular technique that you're talking about? I mean, to me, it sounds like this has an enormous amount of mileage. And for, for people who are, you know, tuning into the show and listening to this, where we're talking about Sober University by Cheryl Adler, um... Uh, is it wrong for me to really sort of single that out as I think a really, really good reason why why people should A, buy this book, and B, how they can, by using this technique, really start to crack a pattern that's obviously, you know, been destroying or, um, you know, causing all sorts of upset in the past? No, I, I, I agree with you, and I thank you for pointing that out, that I think that is a very simple and, and hopefully an easy tool to mm. work with is mm. to be able to say, okay, I'm going to run the movie of my life right now, and this is the segment that I need to look at. I don't need to look at the entire film footage, but I need to take a look at this segment mm. and watch it very carefully, not, mm. not with a harsh judgment, but with a compassion for oneself, which I think mm. is very hard for addicts to do, is yeah. to really give themselves that that tender loving care and the compassion that they have a disease and they're looking for help just as much as a diabetic or a heart patient or somebody who needs to get contact lenses or eyeglasses right 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 but right. Th- but this but this addiction has such far reaching effects in in terms of its the tsunami it can cause in your life yes absolutely right absolutely right so do you advise your clients to maybe write down the different scenes in their personal movie? Does that help your clients? I think that it helps some people. Um, mm-hmm. th- those who are willing to get creative, and, and certainly I encourage creativity mm-hmm. in, in, in my work with my clients, as well as I encourage humor. Mm-hmm. Um, because because it's, it is difficult and painful work, but if we, mm. if we lose... Our, our compassion or our humor, we, we will get stuck in, in very hard places. We'll be stuck in the quicksand. Right. So, yes, I think this is a viable tool, and I encourage people who are listening to try out this tool themselves, keep a journal. Mm-hmm. Uh, you might even draw uh, boxes, you know, mm. and, and put in the boxes what you would put in the, the visual picture of each frame that would lead you to that defining moment where you say, all right, I'm, I'm going to relapse. I'm, I'm, I'm picking up. It doesn't matter. Only this moment matters. I, I've, I've got to get high. I'm in too much right. pain. Right, right, right. You're sort of breaking it down into a series of stages rather than just assuming it's one stage. No, I, I don't believe it is one stage. No, quite. I, 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 th- I think there are multi-layers Mm. that go into the trigger and the and the decision to pick up and use. And once again, I think that it is elusive for many mm. addicts. And I think mm. that this process of freeze-framing it can help an addict access that picture more honestly and mm. more clearly. No, I think I think it's excellent. I really do. And, Thank and you. what do you what do you say to, you know, sort of clients who or patients who are embarking upon a journey are aware on some increasing level that they've been using their addiction to mask as you've acknowledged previously um 
painful feelings, uncomfortable feelings. What do you say to clients in the context of this process about how they can learn to better manage uncomfortable feelings that come up? Well, I, I think in the most simplistic way I can tell you, I'm really encouraging people. I want to give people hope and encourage them and give them the safest place possible to endeavor to find the truth and, mm. and that it feels dangerous, it feels terrifying, it feels paralyzing. And, and yet I think if we can just take it very gently, uh, people then begin to open up. There, there needs to be trust. Tr trust is the most essential component. And mm. to know that they have a witness who's in their corner and there is no judgment. It's, it's really saying, I'm, I'm here taking the journey with you. Let's both agree that there are better solutions. We might not know what they are, mm. but we're going to keep our eyes open and we're going to keep looking. Mm, mm. The other um, thing that stood out very strongly for me in this chapter was you, is, is the talk about neurofeedback. Yes. And how ultimately what you're saying is is that um, there is a sort of a conditioning. This is the sort of the biochemistry that we talked about earlier. That sure. there's a conditioning mm -hmm. that takes place in the mind. So what you're saying is is that um, by following this approach, when it comes to understanding triggers and learning how to react to them differently, yes. by following this, you can then start to change the actual neurofeedback in the brain. Yes, because our brains are, are what we now have come to understand are, are what we call neuroplasticity. They mm. can continue to be shaped and changed and reformed. <clears throat> it's not like a permanent lump of clay that you put in the um, the kiln and it cannot ever change. Right. Yeah. So we we really have to always look at how to get well as anything is possible, mm. and, and and so we've got to keep that creative edge that there is always possibility to change and improve, and use as many tools as we can. Um, there is hypnosis that often helps to break through some of, of these barriers that, some, okay. that, that can help the therapeutic process. It can speed it up a little bit. Um, we're not necessarily looking to, for ha having people do this for decades on end, but to know that it is a commitment and it is a process and it did not happen overnight. Mm, mm. And, and uh, also going back to this particular chapter um, in the book, uh, Sober University, mm -hmm. um, you, you, you're also talking further about low energy neurofeedback system or lens as it's known. Yes. Um, that's an interesting process because ultimately you go on to describe how um, a sort of a person has electrodes. Yes. Strategically placed. Um, on their uh, on their head and their forehead. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. And, and what is, what is the effect of that? Uh, well, that I think again, this is all about self awareness, and that is what the original biofeedback, which is now called neurofeedback, is all about: is helping individuals become more and more aware of what they're feeling, mm. and um, then not to stay in the feeling as much as to identify what is the feeling so that they can move forward with a behavior that will be in their best service. It will not work against them. It will work for them. Right, right, right. Does that make it, sense, right? It does. It okay. does. It does. And, and, and I know that there's a reference in that chapter as well. You, you, you cite Native Americans who were very mindful of the outcome of a decision and not only oh, the decision. Yes, yes yeah, for I'd generations, absolutely. Yes, the, yes. the great respect for whatever we do today will have an impact many, many years from now. Are, are yes. we clear about that? Yes, yes. I mean, for me, this whole chapter is about raising individual and personal consciousness. Yes, it, absolutely. It's all about saying, you know, you are the person who is steering the ship here. Mm -hmm. You can understand the navigation far more explicitly if you follow these particular techniques. Yes. And by becoming more conscious, you can start to affect, not necessarily immediately, 
but you can start to affect change, which incrementally will help to sort of steer the ship in a very much different uh, direction going forward. Yes, and I like your word incremental, because when you do it in that method, where you're taking gentle steps, you build on something in a, in a way which builds your confidence, and I believe it re will really anchor you. Mm, mm. Um, you're, you're building what we call a, a strong foundation for your sobriety, and that's what we're yeah. looking for. We, we would never think of building a house or a building that has a weak foundation because it, it will just crumble. Yes. So we, we've got to start with the fundamentals, which is to build a strong foundation. And the incremental building of something will build your confidence. Yes. And, and, and as you've acknowledged, for many individuals who are struggling with, an addi with addiction, they have suffered trauma. So they're suffering a sort of a, a traumatic impact on their early foundations, shall we say. Absolutely. Yeah. And so that pattern of trauma is so often and so unconsciously repeated time and time yeah. again. Yeah. And it, it's, yeah. it's, um, it's really part of the analytic level of the work, mm -hmm. bringing mm -hmm. into awareness and speaking the unspeakable. And I, I think that's a brave thing to do. It's courageous to be able to speak the unspeakable. Yes, yes. And of course, what you're obviously sort of, you know, dovetailing into here is the work that you do with clients on a one to one basis. Absolutely. So in addition to reading the book, in addition to following techniques like the technique that we've talked about in this particular chapter, yes. you know, consulting the help of somebody like yourself, who's a psychotherapist, you know, somebody who's very much specialized in the field of addictions, helps enormously in terms of being able to unpick some of the things that have been locked away that are you know sort of shut down when it comes to being the individual being conscious of them and bring those to conscious awareness yes because we know that the very first step in 12-step work is denial is not just a river in egypt it's probably <laughs> the most 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 it wasn't that funny, but thank you for laughing. Well, I, I need a laugh here. <laughs> it, 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 it truly is the most yeah. tenacious and primitive of our, of our uh, defense mechanisms, yeah, is yeah. to say, I don't have a problem. I don't know what you're talking about. There's nothing wrong with me. Big deal. And it's a very, very long list of, of um, verbal uh, combat uh, to, to push away the reality that there is a problem. Yes, yes, yes. And, yes. you know, once we can break through denial, I, I think that in itself is quite a miraculous process. Mm, mm. And you're very transparent in this book. You're talking about the fact that, you know, everything that's detailed therein, you know, can run very comfortably alongside attending a 12-step program. Yes. Um, choosing, a, you know, sort of a, a rehab that works for the individual, finding a supportive therapist like yourself, um, you know, changing up the relationships that you have, you know, on a, on a, on a, on a healthy and, and, you know, loving basis as well. So, yes, there's, we, there's we wanna, so we, we're looking at every possible viewpoint that's going mm. to enrich your life and make sober living as joyful and successful as possible. And, mm. you know, so this is where the title of my book comes from. It's a university of learning. Mm. And it's a comprehensive book, and it covers so many elements of recovery and sobriety. And it is the next step. It, it's the 12 steps, and then it goes beyond. Beyond. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So somebody can read this book. They can be in a 12-step program, but they can also read this book independent of a 12-step program, can't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. Yes. 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 The 12 yes. steps are incorporated in the book. And yes. then, of course, we go beyond that because life is large and wide and wondrous, and we want you to be in the rooms and enrich yourself, and we want you to be in therapy, but we want you to be out mm. in the world mm. and, and live. So, I've got to ask you this question. Sure. When an individual relapses, and I know from having sort of, you know, worked with clients how, you know, sometimes that can be a very, very devastating experience for them. 
took the words right out of my mouth. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Devastating. Absolute, devastating. Absolute Filled with devastating. shame. Yes, exactly. Yes. Exactly. exactly. Yes. And it, you know, for, for, for you and I, it's very, very difficult to watch when you, you know, when, you, when you've, you, you've seen somebody work so hard at, 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 at shifting, you know, shifting their behaviors. But I guess the question is, while we're talking about triggers, yes. is it a situation where, because sometimes, yes, people do relapse, Absolutely. is that just a massive trigger in, dis- in disguise? Is that's what co- is that what has caused that that uh, individual to relapse? Is that a trigger just rearing its ugly head again? Well, I I think each person's trigger or triggers may be accumulating, and perhaps they're able to contain their triggers for a period of time. But it's possible that the stress in their life mm. leads them to finally become so exhausted or so broken. Right, that right. Uh, they can't carry it anymore. The, the weight of their life is, is really harrowing. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we're all human, and I'm, I'm not hardly ever endorsing relapse, um, but I am saying, yes, it is part of our humanity. And the thing that I would say is when somebody feels that they're about to relapse, if they could first, oh, if they could only tune in to the signs and signals that they're getting in right. their body, in their emotions, in their behaviors, that mm-hmm. they could then reach out to their therapist or a family member or a friend and say, look, I'm, I'm in a bad place. I, I, see, I see that the train is coming down the track mm-hmm. and, and I'm about to get hit by it. Yeah. I, th- I think yeah. that would be a defining moment for mm-hmm. that person to step up and say, I need help right now because I'm on the ledge and I don't, right. I don't want to do it. I, I really, right. I want this to be different this time. Yeah, and yeah. I, I, I'm just getting a signal here that we're going to wrap up in a moment. But I, sure, I, sure, want sure. To, I really do want to emphasize that, that relapse can be prevented once a person is able to identify those factors Mm-hmm. And that they can learn not to use their reptilian brain and act out, but mm-hmm. they can process the information and they have a toolbox and they've got human beings who care. And they can call somebody or reach out to somebody and say, I'm in danger. Mm-hmm. I am in danger. Mm-hmm. And that people who love them and care enough will say, okay, you're safe. You were brave, you were courageous to acknowledge this. You're not in denial. Let's do something here. Mm-hmm. Really inspiring stuff, Cheryl, as is this book. It's, it's, been a, it's been a pleasure finding out more about it. It really has. Thank you so much, Neil. It is such a pleasure to have you for my colleague and my dear, dear friend, and that here we are talking across thousands of miles as if okay. we were right in the same room. Yeah, I wish exactly. I could have a spot of tea with you right about well, now. Well, well, exactly. But doesn't this just bring home how this, you know, everything that's detailed in this book is a universal phenomenon. So, you know, help is needed wherever one is, in, you know, around the globe. And, uh, and, and this book, Sober University, is just tremendous. Thank you so much for your great confidence, your encouragement and your faith. And again, my gratitude for taking time out of your busy life to be here. This, once again, is my dear friend and colleague, Neil Dickens, accredited psychologist from London, talking to us from the glorious island of Guernsey off the coast of France. <laughs> you say it so beautifully. Très joli. Très, très joli. It's my aussi. Merci beaucoup. Ah. Uh, pas de quoi. <laughs> à tout à l'heure. <laughs> Thanks, Cheryl. À demain. I'll, à demain. I'll talk to you very, very soon. Oh, my goodness. I so look forward to that. And be All well. Right. All right. We're going to sign off for now. All right. Have a wonderful rest of the day. And you too. Bonsoir. Right. Bon nuit. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bon nuit. Bye-bye. <laughs> well, listeners, thank you so much for sharing your time with us. Uh, The chat room will be open Tuesday night, so please join us at rocklandworldradio.com, my home away from home, or give us a call at 845-353-2910.
I love being here. I have wonderful colleagues at this station. Please scroll down and, and look at all our wonderful shows. There is something here for everybody. Uh, join my friend Glenn Keane, who's got a great show, Spotlight for Success. I could name so many great people who have shows here. And um, we will see you next week, Tuesday at 8 o'clock, for more on Sober Living. This is Cheryl Adler. I want to thank you so much for being with us, and I'll see you next time. Good night. It's not just radio, it's Rockland World Radio. Rockland World Radio dot com.